Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Welcome to the Where Is My Guru Show. This is your host, Jessica Dervaj. We're so happy to have you here. Where Is My Guru is an online podcast. We are live every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we are connecting into the world of yoga and bringing mindfulness community leadership service to our fans, to you. Where is my guru? We're leading you back to you. We're so excited to have you here today. I have a quote that I wanted to read that I saw. Um, it's from this beautiful book called The Book of Awakening by Mark Nepo. I'm not sure if any of you have ever heard of that book, but um, I recently was in a yoga class at the Copper Mountain, po- or Copper Mountain Mountain Pose Medicine and Yoga Symposium last weekend, and they had a fabulous teacher, Keisha Wicks, um, from Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I was in Shavasana. And you know sometimes... You're in Shabbat and you have one of those experiences when um, you just kind of feel a little bit out of your body. It was an amazing class, an amazing teacher, and they just bring to you the perfect reading. They just offer you up the most perfect thing, the words that you exactly needed to hear. And I'm sure that it went along with a class that I exactly needed to take, something for my body, mind, and spirit. And so I immediately asked her, where did you get that reading? And she said, it's Mark Nepo. Book, book of Awakening, and I also have, I also got another book of his too called um, The Exquisite Risk, Daring to Live an Authentic Life. So I'm reading that as well. You can get both of those on your Kindle, so I highly recommend it. So now for the quote. Um, it's by John Wellwood, and he says, forget about enlightenment. Sit down wherever you are and listen to the wind singing in your veins. Can you imagine? Forget about enlightenment. To sit down wherever you are and just be, there it is, here we are. We have moments each and every day of enlightenment. We have moments of pure bliss, pure ecstasy, and it's the idea of how we can lengthen these moments, how these moments can last for longer and longer and longer. And these moments come in times of high triumph, right? They come in times of pure happiness and joy and celebration, and these moments can also happen in the deepest and darkest crevices of our being as well, where there's fear. Because once we lift the veil of that fear, then there is that wind singing through your veins again. So I, I, re- I, love, I loved that quote. It's, um, I, I think you'll be hearing a lot more from Mark Nepo on the show as I move through reading this book, uh, The Book of Awakening, uh, having the life you imagined is it's a day-to-day so I've been reading it every day and I'm waking up and I'm reading one to Carl he wants to hear it and um and it's just been a really beautiful way to start to start my day so I hope that you you enjoyed that and I'm, I'm so thrilled to have you here um we're excited we have a wonderful show today if you are just tuning in for the first time I want you to head over to Twitter if you have a Twitter account we use hashtag WIMG and we chat so there's a whole crew of us that come on every Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we chat and we talk, and sometimes our guests are, sometimes our guests are actually on the chat line with us chatting to everybody, answering questions. And if they're not, sometimes you can ask questions, and the guests will actually you know, come on and answer your questions afterwards. Find us on Facebook, just Where Is My Guru? And, of course, our website, our lovely website, whereismyguru.com. So really thrilled. To, uh, to, to have everybody here if it's your first time here. Our guest today on the show, absolutely amazing. We have Mary Bruce, marybruce.com. Um, Mary Bruce is a yoga teacher. She is um, a divine goddess, and she actually was the one who inspired kind of a whole movement of shows that we've been having lately, bringing some musicians on and really wanting to talk to people that may not necessarily be in, like, working in the yoga world, but their practice is working for them. And Mary's teacher and my teacher are one and the same. We both practice with Yoga Rupa, Rod Stryker. And Mary's actually at the, the Stryker household today up in Carbondale, Colorado, and we're going to be talking with her in just a bit. So Mary emailed me. Um, well, let me back up a little bit. Mary and I met about, I think it's six years ago. It, it is six years ago because Carl and I just celebrated our six-year anniversary. We met at Kripalu at a yoga a fulfillment training with Rod Stryker. And what I love about kind of the, the, um, the auspiciousness and the synchronicities around today's show is that I said to Rod um, during that training, Rod, I really want to quit my job and I want to go back to teaching yoga and, you know, kind of go back into the classroom and that's all I want to do. And he looked at me and he said, that's my dear 
here just come. The world does not need another yoga teacher. The world needs people in the world living their yogic principles. The world needs people in the world being compassionate, having an open heart, being understanding. The world needs people in the world that are learning to walk their walk. And I was really angry with him, actually. I was really like, how can he say that? I, I, I'm working for the Marriott. Doesn't he understand? And, um, and, and while I now teeter a little bit of a balance between being in the world and um, also knowing that I have a, a, a desire to teach yoga and to distill the teachings for not only, you know, for myself, and, and if, if I'm lucky, a group of people are with me when I'm doing it so we can all learn together. I've really learned what it means to be in the world. And we're going to hear from our second guest, Jennifer Nettles of Sugarland, in just a little while. And she's going to address that very, very, very thing that Roz said to me. She's going to talk a little bit about, um, about her lyrics and, and, and her work as a yogi in the world, being, uh, being a musician, and how she connects with thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of fans. And they have four million fans on Facebook. So we are so thrilled to welcome Mary and Jennifer to the show, and Mary actually is Jennifer's yoga teacher. So circling all the way back around again, Mary um, emailed us a few months ago, and she said, you know, this, I have this amazing relationship with Jennifer Nettles of Sugar Land. I'm her yoga teacher. I travel with her, and I think that she would be a great guest to have on the show to talk about how she's finding this balance in her life. And, of course, we said, well, Mary, you've got to come on the show too. So we are going to have both of them on the show in just a little bit, but before then, before then, it is 11.08 Eastern Standard Time, and you know what time that is. We have been compiling all the best of the best of the news all week long from our favorite partners in our virtual saga, Elephant Journal, Yoga Door, Fast Company, Good, that is, Inc.com. So 11.08, it is the WIMG News with the beautiful WIMG News anchorwoman, Jennifer Cusano. Happy Friday, everyone. What a crazy week this has been. There have been so many different things going on out in the world. And actually, my first piece of news comes from the Yoga Votes Camp. Um, they were over at the RNC this week at the Oasis, sponsored by the Huffington Post. And they were there with mas massage therapists and super healthy food and just created this really special space for people to come and relax and sort of, um, you know, disconnect and unplug and so Sean Korn sent around this e-blast and um, I'm just going to quote her here quickly. She said, we are reminded that whenever you do things for the first time, there is a challenge. This is unfamiliar turf and yet we feel more affirmed than ever in this work of bringing the practice and values of yoga into the political space. It is necessary now more than ever to confront separation with connection, with fear, with love. This is what we do at Off the Mat. We confront challenge and breathe into the, space, into the places that feel difficult. And that is exactly what we did this week. So check that out. There's some more there from her. And it looks like they, they had a pretty good time over there, if you can have a good time at the RNC. Um, and my next piece of, yoga, of news comes from Yoga Dork. And it's just a really cute picture of Drew Barrymore. She's pregnant and looking happy and healthy, going to yoga class, and totally cute. I can remember loving Drew Barrymore when I was younger. Um, so hoping and sending her good vibes that she gets through the rest of her pregnancy that way. Um, and I actually came across this, this uh, video this week. Uh, this is coming from Yoga Anonymous, and it's on dudism. And apparently there is an entire religion dedicated to uh, this, this 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 practice called Judaism, and it's this laid-back practice based on the Big Lebowski, um, a cult movie classic in the 90s. I think it came out around 1998. And there are over 150,000 Judaist priests around the world. So check that out. There's some video of the guy who's spearheading this whole thing. Um, it, was pretty, it was pretty interesting, actually. Um, and this next piece of news comes from our very own blog, and um, our programming coordinator, Heather, Heather Church, uh, she wrote this beautiful, beautiful piece 
it reminded me um, of that, I think it's Dr. Seuss, Oh, the Places You Will Go, um, and it's Open to All Possibilities in Life was the title, and it, and it basically catalogs her changes through her adult life, ultimately throwing her whole life into her yoga practice, and then her, through her connection with Where Is My Guru, which landed her backstage at a Sugarland concert, hanging out with Jennifer Nettles and Barry Gruss, which is totally amazing. And it was just such a beautiful, beautiful piece. You guys have to read it. It, it was great. Um, and my last piece of news comes from Elephant Journal. And, you know, I didn't even know that there was something going on with Lance Armstrong, but apparently, according to the New York Times, they said Armstrong's decision, which I guess his decision to uh, – He's, he's, he doesn't want to be involved with any of the allegations um, toward their accusing him of cheating. Um, but this decision that he's made, according to the World Doping Code, means that he will be stripped of his seven tour titles, the bronze medal he won at the 2000 Olympics, and all other titles, awards, and money he won from August 1998 forward. It also means he will be barred for life from competing, coaching, or having any official role with any Olympic sport or other sport that follows the world anti-doping code. You can read in full what happened, um, that, and this is why I love Elephant Journal. They have, you know, so much information on this one blog page, and they've got some really killer links to some other blog posts um, so that if you're interested in that kind of a thing, you can read in detail uh, what happened. I feel kind of really bad about that. I think Lance Armstrong is, is a pretty stand-up guy. He does amazing outreach work with cancer patients and kids. They've got so much going on. I feel pretty terrible. And I, I think, for me anyway, he will always be a champion and a hero. So, And that's it. That's all I've got for you guys this week. Um, and I hope everybody has an amazing weekend, Labor Day weekend, right? So party it up for the last time this summer. <laughs> The last weekend of summer, guys. Last weekend of summer. I think I, I saw this I saw this quote today that says, Make sure you spend some time laying in the grass, looking up at the sky. Make sure you spend some time with no shoes on, putting your feet in some water somewhere. So find a stream, find somewhere. Make sure you spend some time hugging a tree. Make sure you spend some time ga- doing some flower gazing. So all think about all of the things that you won't be able to do in just three short months. And of course in three short months There'll be lots of new things to explore and, and new wonderments that the, that the planet, this Mother Earth, is really, really giving to us and birthing to us. But now is it's sort of an end, and today is a blue moon. Um, so today is a blue moon, and just so you guys know, blue moon does not actually mean that the moon's going to be blue. It means that there's there's been two full moons in this one month. There was a full moon on August 1st and a full moon today, the last day of the month, August 31st, and it's a Full moon rising in Pisces. So I encourage you guys to go. I was reading about that last night. I'm a Pisces. I have a lot of things happening in my own, my Vedic chart right now. I'm entering into this kind of new era for the next seven years, actually, today. And I have these, this beautiful moon. And I'm, I'm really looking to kind of let go of, of what's not serving me and realizing that the winds of enlightenment are blowing right through my veins as I sit here and speak to you. We are going to take a quick break on this break. Listen to our White Swan, Deva Pramal, and the track is called Shyam. When we come back, we are going to be live with Mary Bruce. And uh, just remember, guys, where is my guru? Leading you back to you. Where is my guru.com. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with Mary Bruce. You are listening to Where is My Guru with Jessica Dervage. Where is my guru leading you back to you? You can find us at whereismyguru.com on Facebook, Where is My Guru. Hang out with us on Twitter, same thing, Where is My Guru. We use the hashtag WIMG. We are interviewing Jennifer Nettles of Sugarland in just a bit. And right now we have my good friend Mary Bruce with us on the show. Hey, Mary, how are you? Is Hello? Mary there? Hey, yes, Mary. I am. Hi. Hi, Mary. How are you? I'm doing good. Is this Jessica? This is Jessica. Hi. Hi. <laughs> are we live? We are live, girlfriend. We are live <laughs> on the air. Yes, Yay. we are. <laughs> How are you? It's so great to hear your voice and, I'm and actually good. connect to you a little bit instead of through email. <laughs> Right, I know. I don't think we've physically seen each other since that um, and since that retreat workshop at Kripalu. And 
But it seems like it was yesterday. I remember your face. I remember sitting there and crafting that Sankalpa with you. And, and uh, yeah, like it was yesterday. So amazing. That workshop made such an impact on my life, and I refer to it often. <laughs> I think about it almost daily. Every time I look at my partner, who I'm getting ready to marry in two months. I know. Um, I, Congratulations. I think about that workshop. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, Mary, first of all, we want to express our gratitude to you for helping to organize this show, and you've really helped to help to inspire us to want to connect with people that are um, that are taking their practice into really interesting areas, whether it be on the stage in front of 400,000 people or into the classroom, um, and also connect with the teachers that are inspiring them to do so. So we're really grateful for you. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. I was um, listening in and hearing what you had said about what Yoga Rupa said to you about people living in the world and living passionately and living fulfilling lives that, um, you know, the world doesn't need more yoga teachers. And so I was smiling because I remember him saying that in different trainings as well. And uh, really, it's about taking your yoga off the mat and back out into the world. So if I had a little piece of, um, you know, anything to do with that, I'm I'm thrilled. <laughs> Well, I'd love to talk about a special student of yours um, who's going to be on the show in just a little bit, um, Jennifer Nettles of Sugarland. And you actually get to do something really kind of cool. You travel around with her and um, and uh, and are her teach and it, you are her teacher while she's on the road. And I would love for you to kind of share a little bit about maybe how you guys met and how this kind of this really unique and sacred bond and of sisterhood it, it, it seems like began. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, you know, it's really, it's all due to Rod. It's due to Rod Stryker. It was, um, it was in 2006, in December, and he was doing his retreat in Maya Tulum, and I last minute decided to go. And, um, and I met her there, and it was her first yoga retreat. She was just getting into yoga. And um, so she was on break from tour and loved Mexico and just kind of looked it up. And then she looked at his bio and said, yeah, I think I can do that. And <laughs> so it was random and we met there. And I um, actually, she didn't talk about what she did. And we met as just, you know, two women and, and became friendly with one another and had meals together and practiced together. And, and uh, towards the end, I think I asked her what she did. And again, very humble, said, you know, she was a singer. She was a musician. And I asked if it was anything I would know. She gave me the name of the band, and I hadn't listened to country music really at that time, so I didn't know who she was. But I went home and um, and got one of their albums, and um, and then one of the songs just became my theme song. It was called Ain't Settlin', and it's just all of their songs are amazing. Their anthems, the lyrics, I mean, you know, yoga lives and breathes through her and through her music. So, um, long story short, uh, flash forward to, you know, a few months later, May of 2007, and she emailed me and said that her band was coming through Phoenix and did I want tickets to the concert. And I said, sure, you want a yoga class? So, lo and behold, I went out to the venue and taught yoga. There's probably about eight or ten people in the room. It was uh, she and Christian, her partner in music, and um, some of the other band members and from the other bands. And, and afterwards, Christian kind of looked at me in a glaze, and I said, are you okay? And he says, yeah, you want to live on a bus? <laughs> so, <laughs> I said, not really. I just got back from India and didn't have a very good experience on one of those overnight trains. And he says, our bus is really nice. So uh, an idea was born. <laughs> I got um, an email from management saying, hey, let's try this, and, and I did. And so for that first, uh, the second half of that year, I toured with them and fell in love with the road and fell in love with the idea of, you know, practicing this way. And uh, so then it's grown over the years, and we've added more people. There's another yoga teacher that comes out on the road as well, and as well as a personal trainer for Jennifer. So I'm just happy to be, you know, the link in the lineage because Rod is her teacher, and, of course, he can't travel. Um, well, he does travel. He travels everywhere else for his teaching. So um, the transmission comes through me for Jennifer on the Road. Wow, what an amazing story. I want to marry Bruce to travel around with me. We get to wear his <laughs> Mr. Rubus. 
We're going to call Mary <laughs> Bruce, and Mary Bruce is going to come. And actually, we do have a bus. We have an Airstream we've been traveling around. Come on, Mary. Come on. Right. <laughs> I'm on. <laughs> Mm. Uh, you know, Mary, I'd love to talk with you a little bit about, um, you know, you are you are amazing, spark, bright, brilliant. As some of this, as I was looking through your, your pictures on your on your website, marybruce.com, you know, brilliance is a, is a word that comes up when I when I look into your eyes, and I just I just feel, you know, that you're just so connected to to source and being a woman, um, and and kind of now venturing out into this into this field where I have the I have the ability to empower other women. It's one of the most amazing things that I've I've ever experienced is getting to work with women, empower women, encourage that that divine spark um, of, of feminine energy inside of them. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about, you know, working with and, and teaching powerful women like Jennifer Nettles and how you help to keep that fan that flame and also how you keep how you stay connected to to your own. Mm, great question. Thank you. Um, well, I'm going to go back to a quote that I got from Judith Lasseter years ago, and she said, you know, we as people are not as important as the work we do as yoga teachers, for we are charged with guiding people back home to themselves. And I really took that to heart. And in order to do that, I have to do my own healing first. And so um, I, I immerse myself in my studies and self-study in, with my spiritual mentors, Yoga Rupa. I have another woman that lives in Phoenix. And it's really just about learning to trust and to tap into that, that deep feminine voice. And when I can come from that authentic place, then I don't worry about that small voice that's nagging and doubting and saying you're not good enough and you can't do this. So, you know, that might be the first voice that comes in, but then the real voice comes in, steps in and says, no, you're bigger than this. And when, for myself, when I can tap into that, then I see it everywhere, and it's really easy. Um, and it's just, I think, I think that's the flame, and we have to keep kindling that through meditation, through practice, through breath, through all the modalities that, that spark us. Um, you know, it's easy to see in Jennifer. I've had people uh, credit me with, you know, uh, teaching her yoga and, and bringing out that. But she came in. <laughs> she came in with that spark and that flame. And it's only her connection to the lineage through meeting Rod that's just, you know, made it made it brighter and stronger. Um, and so I just I love to see that in other women. I've been reading a book lately called The Dance of the Dissident Daughter by Sue Monk Kidd. And she says that your heart is a seed. Go plant it in the world. Find your hearts and plant them. And that we transmit our feminine wisdom to one another. And the way we do that is by voicing our souls and finding our own authority. And, uh, you know, it's just tapping into that first knowing, tapping into that wisdom, that deep, rich, round feminine wisdom. You do it. You do it every day. (laughs) And I I find... I find that because I, I think that um, you know I really make an make an attempt to to do that, and and, and at least I know that I hold myself up um, to the fire when I'm not doing it. You know, sometimes when you're doing right. it, you go in the flow and you really recognize. But I think that there's an important thing to remember that when you are doing it, to be able to stop and breathe and see yourself in the flow instead of you know, I, I went through for many, many years and still, still, you know, have, have moments where I'm like, why am I beating myself up so bad? Well, it's probably because I'm not practicing. You know, if I, if I have three or four days where I'm just noticing myself kind of falling off, falling off, falling off, mm-hmm. and then sitting in that time of falling and sort of, you know, being hard on myself. Um, and, and I think that, um, I think that it's so important to remind, um, remind everybody. And, and I feel that, you know, there's so many powerful women that listen to this show and, because we because we have two amazing and powerful women on the show today, um, that that when you are in the flow, and maybe the flow could just be like you're listening to this show right now. You know, you've made an hour to listen to this show, and you're listening mm-hmm. to Mary Bruce, who's so fabulous. <laughs> you just take a moment to be like, wow, I'm you know, I'm I'm connecting to this amazing woman, Mary Bruce, on the show. I'm listening to a show called Where Is My Guru, whose intent, what the show's intention is to lead me back to myself. And I just think that's it's just important to stop and support people in recognizing that. And you do that all the time when you, you know, and at the front of your classroom. It's just so amazing. 
Thank you. I yeah, I resonate with everything you're saying, and I believe that we we just connect to each other with our stories, and and we do forget sometimes. I forget, you know, and and there's um, also saying that you know we forget for the sheer delight of remembering again, because isn't it so sweet when we remember? <laughs> mm, and, I love uh, that. <laughs> right. And then I remember another time when um, I said to Rod, and I said, "I think I think I'm got it. I'm 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 in the flow. I'm finally in the flow." And he says very gently and sweetly to me, "No, Mary, you are the flow." <laughs> <laughs> and I think we forget no, that like too. That we separate that. ourselves, but we are the flow. You know, we are embodied divinity. It, it, we are. It's it, it's like that quote I read at the beginning of the show today. It said, Forget about enlightenment. Sit down wherever you are and listen to the wind singing in your veins. You know, listen to that prana, that divinity. It's already there, there all the time. You know, I think once I start thinking about it is when, <laughs> when I, I move off. Move, move, or, right. You don't ever move away, but, you know, you kind of, you, I all of a sudden start living up in the, in the space around my, my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I oh, like to get out in nature. That's what inspires me. When the weather <laughs> cools down a little in, in Arizona and Phoenix, I will get back outside and go hiking. And um, that's, that's my deep, that's my immersion is into nature. And uh, that's where I connect with the sacred and remember. So if I start forgetting, I've got to get outside. <laughs> well, you know, speaking of immersions and speaking of, of figuring out what, to, what you need to do for you to, to recharge and, and remember that, that wind and that divinity that's singing through your body at all times. You love leading immersions, and you have one. You have a master immersion coming up. But I'd lo- I would love for you to share a little bit about an, an immersion and what an immersion means to you and why it's so important that we, that we take time um, to, to immerse ourselves, whether it's on a yoga mat or just immerse ourselves into something that we love doing in our life. Um, sure. Thank you. Um... Yes, I have a 300-hour master immersion coming up in October, and they're once a month for 11 months, so it's good for somebody that's, you know, perhaps traveling even from another state that if they can take time out for three days once a month to do this, and they can be taken separately or they can be taken all together. You can take all 11 or you can just drop into the topics that uh, interest you. So, you know, to me, an immersion is to go deep into something, to have a deep understanding. You know, it means to soak. Um, so to become soaked, to go deep, um, embodiment. And, and through that comes transmission. So uh, this is a rich, well-rounded program that will cover many topics. And uh, from Marma, which is the sensitivity of touch, Vinyasa Krama, wise intelligence sequencing, Ayurveda, the knowledge and science of life, prana, our management of energy and how we can do that in order to master our mind. And of course, tantric philosophy, the ability to thrive everywhere in our lives. Um, and then, you know, therapeutic yoga, how to work therapeutically with people, restorative yoga, it's so important in this day and age, and that'll cover um, res- restorative as well as yoga nidra and uh, some of the uh, much meditation and even a little bit of yoga fulfillment as well as the subtle body koshas the chakras and then our graduation with uh, studying the mahabharata and all the different gods and goddesses and their meanings so it's um quite a journey and the commitment and the self-understanding that comes out of it is amazing. We led one last year and so transformative. I really love to work with small groups of people in this way. Can you be a beginner yogi and come to an immersion with you? Um, you can drop in and take them as topics of interest, but this is really for um, mostly for teachers who have already had a 200-hour program that want to go deeper. But definitely you can drop in and just take one if it interests you. So there are a lot of 200-hour programs out there, but this is like the next step. It's like, what do you want now? You know, you've had the tip of the iceberg, you've got, you've got your feet wet, and where, what do you want to do next? So this is to, you know, become even more immersed in the tradition. And 
Well, I, I mean, I wish that I could go. I'm, I'm going to be traveling for a couple months this winter, but I, because you're, you're not too far from me. I'm in Denver, Colorado, so you're. Oh not, yeah, you, no, not at all. You know, you're just, yeah, you're right. You're right down the road. But I, and I, and I, I'm, I'm going to come in. in 2012. I'm going to come and practice with Mary Bruce. Maybe I'll drop it into one of your immersions in the spring or summer. I so, would um, love it. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, um, you are actually kind of in an immersion with your teacher right now, correct? Yes. Well, um, I'm actually at the Stryker residence as we speak, and uh, I think he's down at the barn either working or immersed in his own practice. And we are going to the concert this evening with Jennifer, and uh, they're playing at the um, Snow Mass in the Aspen Jazz Festival. So I came up a day early to stay with the Stryker clan and to do this interview, and then we're going to go up later this afternoon and and hang out with the group. So that will be a lot of fun. And then I've been studying with Rod since 1998, and I just knew he was my teacher from the moment I met him. He he didn't even open his mouth. You know how there's some of those people that just their presence precedes them? (laughs) There was just a deep knowing, and then he just started talking and um, chanting and talking about bandhas and and mudras and things that I had never done before. And the way that we practice, um, I had such a deep connection with myself and the best shavasana ever. (laughs) So I was... He gives good shavasana. (laughs) Right. (laughs) That's the highest compliment, I think, if somebody tells me that. And I get that quite often, too. It used to be about the wowie poses, and now they're like, oh, Mary, that was such a great shavasana and i know i've done a good job if i get that <laughs> so well, i think you know, you know i love that and i i think that there's anybody listening out there especially if you have some maybe some sugarland fans listening out there woo-woo, um that you know, maybe don't have a yoga practice and like hearing what mary just said that you know yoga is really about shavasana is a relaxation pose and so it's what we do at the end of every single class and we lay and we relax and i'm sure everybody out there can relate just life just keeps going and going and going and it's so fast and what mary's talking about shavasana is this time where we get to relax and lay and shavasana actually means corpse pose that's what it means the shavasana is a sanskrit word for corpse and you kind of lay there like you're not alive and the right. world stops and it's beautiful and when you have a really wonderful teacher they hold that space for you to just kind of cocoon up like a little baby in the womb. But doesn't that sound mm-hmm. yummy? <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, and that's a lot of what I do with Jennifer and uh, the other band members that want to join, if they do, is that, um, you know, their their concert is so athletic. I mean, you know, if you've been to one, she's just all over the stage. She's dancing and running around. And, and uh, so our practices together are really to balance. You know, sometimes they're movement, and then other times they're restorative. And then, of course, a lot of meditation. So we've been really focusing on meditation this year and yoga nidra. And it's been fantastic. If there's, um, you know, give, giving, I know that there are some of her fans listening out there right now. If there's, you know, what's her, what's her favorite pose to do? Um, Janu Shirsasana. <laughs> <laughs> she loves that pose. It really kind of gets her little hot spot. So that's, uh, you know, it's a seated forward bend, and one foot is on the inner thigh of one leg that's extended, and, uh, and then you fold over that extended leg. And so say she's folding over the right leg, then it stretches out the whole left side of the bo- body and the back and the quadratus and the sacrum and the lumbar, and, and it just it's yummy to her, and she just loves that one, so I always have to make sure I incorporate Chanya <laughs> What's her least favorite pose? Ooh, well, there's might be a couple of them. Um, it used to be handstand, but I think she's getting a little bit, you know, she's not so much anymore, so that one's okay. And um, I think the back bends, uh, camel, ustrasana. So she's not a real back bend girl, but uh, she really loves the yummy stretches. <laughs> <laughs> but she's love, game. She'll try you, anything. I love that. I love that. As a teacher, I have all these things going through my head of, like, she so, has to give so much that so she really needs to kind of restore with the forward bending. Oh, yes, yes. You Fill know. her cup. She gives yeah. 110%. <laughs> well, I know one of our – you got to meet Heather Church, our intern. and, she, and Yes, that was so fun. That show was just amazing to her. She's, you know, she was so – 
so excited after that. And she wrote about it. I'm not sure if you read the blog that she wrote about it. I just read it last night, and it was so fantastic. I'll have to pass it on to Jennifer. Um, yeah, so that's one of, you know, the the beauties of social media and Facebook. And, you know, I happened to be on at the right time and saw that she was from Ohio, and we were heading there, and it was like, okay, well, let's make this connection. <laughs> that, that's great. Mary, um, we're so grateful for you helping to organize this wonderful show. If anybody is in the Phoenix Scottsdale area, find Mary Bruce. You can check her out at marybruce.com and you can learn all about this wonderful master immersion that you don't need to live there. You go visit once a month or you drop into one. But um, definitely if you, you know, want to practice with who Jennifer Nettles practices with, then check out marybruce.com. She is one amazing lady. Mary so, so, so grateful. I hope that you have a wonderful time tonight with Yoga Rupa and with Jennifer and just send them all our love. Oh, thank you so much, Jessica. It was such a pleasure to be on your show and just so excited for your continued expansion and your upcoming nuptials. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Mary. Namaste. Namaste. So, guys, we are going to have my interview with Jennifer Nettles coming up next. I am so thrilled to be here with each and every one of you. We have a a record number of people listening to the show live right now. We are so excited. If you are listening, please check us out on Twitter. We come to Twitter every week and we hang out. We use the hashtag WIMG. That's for Where Is My Guru? And we're also on Facebook, and we love hearing from our fans. If you have a favorite Jennifer Nettles song or picture, please let us know. Shout it out on Twitter. Shout it out on Facebook. We will let her know. We're so excited. Um, and that was wonderful. You guys just got to listen to Jennifer's yoga teacher, Mary Bruce. How cool is that to have somebody be traveling around with you teaching you yoga? And I think once you hear this interview, this act that I did with Jennifer, that you'll really appreciate that she wants to keep herself, her spirit, her soul, her body, her vibrance, her mind at balance and um, and, and that, so that she's happy and fulfilled, so that when she comes on stage, she has the energy to just give to you. If you've never um, taken a yoga practice, you know, if you've never practiced yoga before, um, one of the beautiful things about yoga is, Mary said this during the interview, is that it helps to kind of fill up your cup. So when you're practicing, it's whether you're meditating or you're doing asana, which is all of the different postures, it helps you to kind of Fill up your cup. Throughout the day, we're giving here, we're giving there, we're running here, we're running there, and so our cup gets a little bit empty. And so yoga helps us to, you know, kind of keep filling up our cup with that, with that beautiful, like, spark of energy, that very uniqueness that we all have on the inside. And so, um, and so Jennifer practices this so that she can share that spark when she's with you. And she doesn't, when she does that night after night after night after night. And, um, and so I would, I would, if you practice yoga, please come let us know. If you have a yoga practice, take a picture of yourself. Do a pose and post it on our page. Let us know. We would love to share with Jennifer all her fans, and we'd love to share with Mary all the fans that are out there practicing yoga inspired by um, someone like Jennifer Nettles and Mary Bruce. Um, really excited. So come hang with us. Check us out every Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are live every single week, and we talk about yoga, community, leadership, service, and we're here to answer any questions that you might have about yoga after the show if you're curious. Um, so without further ado, I'm super stoked to play my interview with Jennifer Nettles of Sugarland. Enjoy. Hi, this is Jessica with Where Is My Guru, and you are listening to an interview that um, I am doing right now with Jennifer Nettles. I'm a little bit um, giddy with the hashtag in front of it, uh, Jennifer Nettles. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Um, I can't lie, but Jennifer is part of the band Sugarland, and I'm so thrilled to have her here. Hi, Jennifer, how are you? I am well. Thank you for having me. Well, we are so grateful for... I know you have a busy, busy tour schedule, and um, so grateful for your time to come and join us on the show. Um, you are in Cincinnati right now, and you are getting ready to perform tonight. And um, I just want to give a little shout out for Heather Church, our programmer, who is absolutely over the moon that she's going to be able to come and see you. So thank you so much for some passes for her. Thank you. <laughs> of course, my pleasure. You know, Jennifer, I connected. Um, well, Mary, Mary Bruce, who, um, who you practice with, who's one of your teachers, she reached out to me and shared how um, 
really wanted to share kind of your journey as a yogini and a performer, and she really wanted me to take a deeper look at it, and she thought maybe it would be a great fit for the show, and I was like, of course it would be a great fit for the show, but as I looked deeper and deeper, and even began to listen to some of the lyrics, and I was reading something on your website today, and, and a quote that you said, it said, we are in a place of discovery, it is the essence of who we are, there is never a moment where we think that this is good enough, there is always a place for more, and I thought, that is a very yogic thing to say, um, you know, <laughs> that we are always in a place of discovery, and so I'm sure that our listeners are really, would really be interested in knowing how you found your way to the mat, was it while, as you were a performer, was it before you became part, part of the band? Um, I actually found my way to the mat as part of the band. I had been going through a lot of, like, lifestyle transitions at the time, different personal issues going on, and I had a friend of mine who actually turned me on to yoga. I was looking for um, coping skills. I was looking for an escape, and I was looking for grounding and some, some way to actually, at the time, physically channel a lot of energy. And uh, a good friend of mine introduced me to yoga and said, hey, you should, you know, you should try this. It, it's really, I found it really helpful for me in my life and consequently really started out practicing very simply with some DVDs that we just found at the, at the department store, very like, like basic level DVDs. And from there, got more interested, bought more DVDs. From there, got more interested, took live human classes. <laughs> and from there, you know, the, and the journey has just continued as I found my way, you know, to, to my teacher and, and continued to, to find my way on the yogic path. So that was really how it started out was there was a need and there was a friend. So you just you just mentioned your teacher, and we do we we have I have something in common with Jennifer Meadows. I'm so excited about this that we both really look to the teachings of Brad Stryker um, yes. as a as a way to help us you know, with with our lives. And and I think mm -hmm. that um I, personally, you know, I'm you know we uh, we have a little we have another hashtag that we like to say I wear as my guru, and it's in Rod we trust. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, forever, forever questioning anything, we, we go we go to Rod, and, and you know, in Rod we trust. But he's, you know, somebody who um, in the yoga community is just is so very down to earth. And and this kind of leads me into my next question for you is, and I've asked Rod this several times in interviews is, is how do you balance from ex the the extraordinary like, expansion of outward outward growth that you experience on so many levels and keep keep that balance with the internal journey. How does one do that? How do I do that? How do you do that? Well, I mean, thank goodness I do have yoga for that now. You know, my practice has really evolved since I first began. And, and in looking for it, many times we don't have a vocabulary when we're at the beginning of a search, and I didn't. What I thought um, was looking for a physical channel for a lot of, of energy at the time and for anxiety was really I, I needed that spiritual channel as well. I didn't have the vocabulary for it. I didn't know how to name it. I just felt it. Consequently, you know, in doing that and, and through my yogic path and what I have learned and am so grateful for, um, also with Rod's teaching, because he is so very practical in life and, and understands and, and celebrates and shares the concept of how yoga is life, is that there is balance to be found there. We have so much coming out, coming at us. We have so much coming out of us as human beings that is required of us and that is put upon us and some of which that is given to us. And that needs to be assimilated, digested, processed so that it can then be turned into something that is healthy, helpful, and can be returned to the world in a positive way. So for me, yoga is definitely that. It is an instrument. It is a tool for life that, that allows me to better be able to function in a balanced manner. Mantra is super important, obviously, in, in the tantric tradition, which is what Rod practices and, and the lineage from which he comes, and I have a really strong connection to that. I think not only as a person, but also as a singer and a writer, um, you know, I, I can definitely appreciate and enjoy vibration and sound and, and repetition in the way that mantra works in order to, to raise energy, in order to manipulate and move energy and in order to make change. If, if 
you could turn one a mantra that you're into a country rock and roll song, what do you, have you ever thought of that, or do you ever play around with, <laughs> with different with well, ways to sing the mantras? It's actually interesting that you say that um, because definitely as a writer, I look at what I do as as a songwriter as mantra in the sense that when you think of mantra as being a vibration and something that is repeated over and over, the fact that we make records and write songs that are sold to millions of people and played over and over countless times in cars and, and on MP3 players and computers and through headphones, that is mantra. And and we definitely, you know, as humans, what we put out there, we attract back to us. And so consequently, I am hyper aware that what I put out there is something that's going to be circulated back. So I want that message to be, well, I'll just put it to you this way, I don't play death metal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> while, there, while there is definitely a place for for shadow and definitely a place for darkness and definitely a place for winter and all of those things, for me, I, I, that's something that, that can be uh, recognized and celebrated and used as a connection, but I tend to much more play on the on the other side and, and on the lighter side and on uh, what feels like a positive message. So, for example, you know, every album that we've had, the, the title of it has been indicative of sort of where we want to go next. Enjoy the Ride, for example, was such a an important uh, album for us that we wanted to make sure that we enjoyed this ride that we were on. Love on the Inside, you know, we wanted to to get that message out there, and all the songs on that album dealt with the topic of love in one way or another, romantic love, self-love, all of those aspects. So I definitely uh, use mantra as, not only a metaphor, but also as a guide in my writing. That's awesome. That is, that is awesome. Speaking of, of sound and vibration, was there a time, I mean, I've learned, I have mostly learned about sound and vibration and what it means through being a healer, through being a yoga teacher, um, and through kirtan and, and mantra, um, but did you, was there a, did you under, were you like looking into the healing, the healing qualities of sound before you, you found yoga? Were those things that you were able to kind of dive in deeper as you became more immersed in your practice? I wasn't specifically looking for it, but it found me. I think mm-hmm. there was, it was more a, a matter of clearly that is a language, vibration and energy and repetition and sound is a language that I was already very familiar with in my own work and throughout my own life and having been a singer and and a writer and a performer for many years and had connected with that from the time that I was a young child. So it was something that I was already doing and familiar with. Um, Yoga and mantra just found me and gave me uh, vocabulary with which to turn those elements into life guiding tools. Will we ever expect to see Jennifer Nettles singing Kirtan? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I love it. I, I definitely love it. Um, I, I feel like what I do is is much more um, pointed to the masses. I should say. I want to to present it in a way that is is not necessarily preaching to the choir. I mean, if someone is already into kirtan, they they are already on some sort of search or something has already found them or they are at least familiar with a certain aspect of yoga and, and that path. I tend to feel like, well, those people are already, you know, playing in the light over here. I want to bring that light to the people who may not have a vocabulary for it and who may not have the the familiarity with it. So I don't know if I'll ever do that, though I do enjoy it very much. That's such a that is such a a, a, a contract and a rod thing to say. Many many years ago, when I was doing um, the Four Desires or the yoga, it used to be called the Yoga Fulfillment Workshop. Mm-hmm. With him, I was in a corporate job, and, and I and I went to him and I said, you know, Rod, I really think really thinking about quitting my job and just going back to teaching yoga. You know, I just you know just teaching yoga again. And and and, and he said, the world does not need another yoga teacher, Jessica. The world needs people who are embodying these. Uh, kind, of, kind of everything that you're talking about, you know, embodying, wanting to spread positivity, wanting to push things to the masses, and then using their practice as a, as a, mm-hmm. to ground them. 
so mm -hmm. um, so, so I, I personally really, really connect with that. And, you know, I, I'm still not back in the, in the yoga room. I'm hosting a radio show, and every once in a while I'm, I'm kind of like teetering, and maybe, maybe I'll teach one class, but it's, it's so rewarding to know that, that you can reach people that um, in, in a way and, 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 serve, and serve them kind of these, these kind of big esoteric, some of them ideas, um, mm -hmm. in, in a way that's very relatable and digestible through amazing, fun, uh, lively, and spirited music, um, or an amazing radio show, you know, whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever one. Um, that's right, because the actual <laughs> yoga classroom is, is really, it, it is just a micro environment of what is the larger world in the sense that it's much more concentrated because hopefully you have people there who, with a similar intention and, and that do understand a similar vocabulary. However, being in the world and living in the world and sharing in the world is, is really the larger and, and more dynamic classroom. Are you working with a particular Sankalpa right now? Right now I am, yes. Would you like to share it? Or do you, I think well, I'm, I'm share actually, it of... yeah, well, I can definitely tell you just uh, the, the nature of it. it. It surrounds the fact that I'm about to have a baby at the end of November. So it is focusing on that right now, on that aspect of, of creation and, and of health and, and all of those elements which is well, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I, I love hearing people's song calls because it's, at the end of the day, it's, it's there, there's something out, you know, it's, it's outward, you know, it's different than mantra, which is inward, but, you know, it's an outward, right. you know, you're wanting to cultivate things in your life, and so, you know, we, we can hold that space for you, Jennifer, to really, mm -hmm. you know, call those things in that you're looking to call in as you, God, what a, what a beautiful process. What's it like to be on tour and, and have the baby inside of you and be creating and singing and connecting with people? What's that, what does that feel like? Well, it's interesting. I'm at a place right now there is a, a creativity and creation is definitely um, a big theme going on in my life right <laughs> now um, between the baby and between music and, and you know, definitely I, I always – you know, play within those realms of creativity, but I think to have the actual physical manifestation of that in, in terms of my pregnancy has been a wonderful uh, learning experience, really, about creation and about creativity in general. So it's, it's been really special. I mean, physically, clearly, obviously, all the, all the elements are there. You know, I, I get fatigued more easily than I normally would. I can't kick around and jump around on stage like I normally, you know, do when I am not pregnant. But it has been such an enriching experience and just what a discovery. This is my, my, my first pregnancy and, and our first child. And so I, I have, I'm constantly just wide-eyed in discovery and, and wonder at all the things that are happening. That's amazing. What a what an amazing um, like story you'll be able to tell your your son or daughter one day. Is you know just being yes. on tour and having and having them in in your womb. Um, well, I wonder how how it's you know we laugh and joke like I wonder what this baby is is going to be and how it's going to be born because from the time I found out that I was pregnant, I went on the road right after then. So for its whole little existence, you know, I have. It, there has been music constantly all the time <laughs> and very loud music. So I wonder, it will be very interesting to see. Yeah, speaking, you know, I have a couple more questions for you. I know you have a, a really busy night of preparing for a show. Um, speaking sure. of being on tour um, and, you know, does Mary come and sometimes does she come and practice with you while you're on tour? Is that how, kind of how you guys, have, you know, connect and how and how that how your yoga practice is supported yes. in some way. Mary Mary comes out on the road, um, which is such a gift to be able to have, you know, a, a teacher out that is able to help because while you know I have my own personal practice, that guidance of someone in the room with you is is always so helpful and and I and for me at least in where I am in my practice can can really allow me to get to a deeper place I think because I focus more um yeah. but it is it is yeah it's a gift for her to come out so she'll come out on the road with us uh periodically 
and uh, you know, off and on each month, and and we do yoga wherever we can find a space. You know, in in the dressing room, and we've uh, we've done yoga in the middle of a race demolition derby racetrack mm-hmm. in a mobile home like you know trailer type out out building before. I mean, we've done it in so many different places that it it's actually. Um, it's it's a good lesson in how you can take it with you anywhere you are. Well, I think that that's just wonderful, and I, and I really it's so it's really amazing to to know that that's like a very a very conscious choice that you made to really want to keep your practice not only internally but externally, but by bringing somebody with you that can really support you and encourage you to hold that space. So I imagine that you know you're pretty busy when you're on tour. Yes, and I need it. I need that that reminder and that grounding and at, and, and at the very least that invitation in knowing that it is there. Sometimes we don't, you know, we, we typically go out on three-day runs where we're out performing for three days and then we have two or three days off and then we come back in and out and that manner is, is how we tour, the rhythm of our tour. And sometimes I may not get to practice with her every single day um, and sometimes I do, but it's a nice reminder to know that that invitation is there and that that you know I can come and get into a different mindset get into a different space and have someone there that yes will hold that space for me to you know to really work on healing and work on grounding and work on balancing and all those things that that are needed throughout our lives. Well, it's, very it's, much so. Really, very much so needed too. When you you know you travel around and you're in a different place every day, and it, it, it's it's very vata and it's very unsettling <laughs> in some ways. <laughs> what are your what are you what do you tend to are you are you pitta vata? What, where, where I lean yourself? pitta. Yeah, I have some vata, but I lean pitta more than anything else. I'm because well, you got some yeah. fire too now, girl. A, a fiery oh. one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Jennifer, I'm I'm so grateful that you were able to share some time with Where Is My Guru today. Maybe, maybe just one more quick question. Where is your guru, sure. Jennifer? Where is my guru? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, is this a trick question? <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> it is, but you're not so- to tell anybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are there are so I mean I, I could name so many places where I can find that you know both both within and within the the hearts and and people that are around me and in in the environment that is created and in family and in and in music I mean there are so many I, I have several obviously now physically I, I, who knows where uh, where Rod is right now however my <laughs> I, I definitely think there are a lot of ways that I could answer that question and not just one. Well, I think that's that's beautiful, and and that is that you know it's all everywhere you look, it's in every moment, right? So there's always an opportunity to to find that that sacred uh, unfolding of our of our lives. And and I heard I I had a chance to speak to a really wonderful woman the other day, and I was using words like accomplish and strive and determination, and she said, you know, that's that's, that's an old language, you know. Now it's it's all about the evolution of just watching our lives blossom because each and every moment, each and every part of our day, each and every thing that we do is an opportunity to see the sacred. And so yeah. and so um this has been a really beautiful sacred time and I feel so honored to um to share not only this time here but to also share a similar path and um and and um and I just wish you wish you many blessings on your journey with your with your child and in your life and also at your show tonight. So I'm I'm super grateful, Thank Jennifer. You. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Many times it is, it's wonderful. You know, there are concepts that we may have theoretically floating around in our heads, but it is only when we utter them in words that we can really sometimes be um, reminded of actually their essence and what they are. So thank you for the question so that I could be reminded today. Oh, namaste. Namaste. Have a great day. You too. That was uh, Jennifer Nettles live on Where Is My Guru. What an amazing interview. Thanks so much for everybody who has been chatting with us. Hey, we're giving away a free, we're giving away one more, uh, the Incredible Machine CD on the Where Is My Guru um, Facebook page. What I want you to do is write your mantra. 
what is your personal mantra? We talked a little bit about mantra in the interview with Jennifer, just to give you guys a little bit of recap. A mantra is something that you say to yourself, um, I am enough. I am enough. I am beautiful. I am awesome. Um, some people are actually using some Sugarland lyrics as their mantra. So you can either find where I posted that this morning. It's a picture of the Sugarland, the Incredible Machine CD, or you can just write on our wall. So Facebook, where is my guru? We're giving away one more. We've been giving away a couple this week. One more of the Incredible Machine CD. So it'd be, maybe you have one, but maybe you want to gift one to somebody. Early Christmas present, right? So where is my guru? We are all about leading you back to you. So whoever is listening today, it's all about we have the answers on the inside to do everything that we need to do to accomplish anything that we need to accomplish in this life. And sometimes we find teachers, like Jennifer Nettles found Mary Bruce, and Mary Bruce's teacher is Rod Stryker, and that's, those are my teachers. And so we find these people, and they help us not to lead us, but they remind us of our own life on the inside. They remind us of our own unlimited potential to live a life that is filled with contentment in every single moment and abiding happiness. And Jennifer Nettles says that she puts all of this into her lyrics. So when she is writing the lyrics for her songs that you guys are singing over and over and over again, that you're singing positive messages. And maybe the next time you're singing a Sugarland song, you remember that you are singing not only these positive messages just out into the universe, having fun, screaming your head off, but you're actually changing the way you you're you're changing the way you are made up by saying these positive things over and over and over again. So maybe this will maybe you'll go on to a Sugarland C D and you'll open up that book and you'll start reading the lyrics and really seeing like what is this message that Jennifer is sharing and want you to share not only with her, back to her, but also with yourself. What is she sharing that she wants you to turn in and look within and just recognize that light, that spark with inside? We are so grateful for Jennifer and for Mary for coming on the show today. Thanks to everybody who joined our Twitter party. That was a party. Just a couple of shout-outs. We had Reagan Ellen, 1011 Photo, Emily Nevins, and, and some other people. But those are just people right on my screen right now that have been um, sending photos of Jennifer, and we've just been having a great time. Tune in again next Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, remember, where is my guru? Leading you back to you. This is Jessica. Have an awesome, awesome week. Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather. a class that I exactly needed to take something for my body, mind, and spirit. And so I immediately asked her, where did you get that reading? And she said, it's Mark Nepo, book, book of Awakening. And I also have, I also got another book of his too called um, The Exquisite Risk, Daring to Live an Authentic Life. So I'm reading that as well. You can get both of those on your Kindle, so I highly recommend it. So now for the quote. Um, it's by John Wellwood, and he says, forget about enlightenment. Sit down wherever you are and listen to the wind singing in your veins. Can you imagine? Forget about enlightenment. Just sit down wherever you are and just see there it is. Here we are. We have moments each and every day of enlightenment. We have moments of pure bliss, pure ecstasy, and it's the idea of how we can lengthen these moments, how these moments can last for longer and longer and longer. And these moments come in times of high triumph, right? They come in times of pure happiness and joy and celebration, and these moments can also happen in the deepest and darkest crevices of our being as well, where there's fear. Because once we lift the veil of that fear, then there's the dust cup. The world does not need another yoga teacher. The world needs people in the world living their yogic principles. The world needs people in the world being compassionate, 
having an open heart, being understanding. The world needs people in the world that are learning to walk their walk. And I was really angry with him, actually. I was really like, how can he say that? I, I, I'm working for the Marriott. Doesn't he understand? And, um, and, and while I now teeter a little bit of a balance between being in the world and um, also knowing that I have a, a, a desire to teach yoga and to distill the teachings for not only, you know, for myself, and, and if I'm lucky, a group of people are with me when I'm doing it so we can all learn together. I've really learned what it means to be in the world. And we're going to hear from our second guest, Jennifer Nettles of Sugarland, in just a little while. And she's going to address that very, very, very thing that Roz said to me. She's going to talk a little bit about, um, about her lyrics and, and, and her work as a yogi in the world, being, uh, being a musician, and how she connects with thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of fans. They have four million fans on Facebook. So we are so thrilled. Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Welcome to the Where Is My Guru show. This is your host, Jessica Dervaj. We're so happy to have you here. Where Is My Guru is an online podcast. We are live every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we are connecting into the world of yoga and bringing mindfulness community leadership service to our fans, to you. Where is my guru? We're leading you back to you. We're so excited to have you here today. I have a quote that I wanted to read that I saw. Um, it's from this beautiful book called The Book of Awakening by Mark Nepo. I'm not sure if any of you have ever heard of that book, but um, I recently was in a yoga class at the Copper Mountain, po- or Copper Mountain Mountain Pose Medicine and Yoga Symposium last weekend, and they had a fabulous teacher, Keisha Wicks, from, from Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I was in Shavasana. And you know sometimes you're in Shabbat and you have one of those experiences when um, you just kind of feel a little bit out of your body. It was an amazing class, an amazing teacher, and they just bring to you the perfect reading. They just offer you up the most perfect thing, the words that you exactly needed to hear. And I'm sure that it went along with today on the show, absolutely amazing. We have Mary Bruce, marybruce.com. Mary Bruce is a yoga teacher. He is um, a divine goddess. And she actually was the one who inspired kind of a whole movement of shows that we've been having lately, bringing some musicians on and really wanting to talk to people that may not necessarily be in, like working in the yoga world, but their practice is working for them. And Mary's teacher and my teacher are one and the same. We both practice with Yoga Rupa, Rod Stryker. And Mary's actually at the, the Stryker household today up in Carbondale, Colorado, and we're going to be talking with her in just a bit. So Mary emailed me, um, let me back up a little bit. Mary and I met about, I think it's six years ago. It, it is six years ago because Carl and I just celebrated our six-year anniversary. We met at Kapalu at a yoga a fulfillment training with Rod Stryker. And what I love about kind of the, the, um, the auspiciousness and the synchronicities around today's show is that I said to Rod um, during that training, Rod, I really want to quit my job and I want to go back to teaching yoga and, you know, kind of go back into the classroom and that's all I want to do. And he looked at me and he said, Jessica, my dear, dear, is that wind singing through your veins again? So I, I, re- I, love, I loved that quote. It's, um, I, I think you'll be hearing a lot more from Mark Nepo on the show as I move through reading this book, uh, The Book of Awakening, uh, Having the Life You imagined is it's a day to day, so I've been reading it every day and I'm waking up and I'm reading one to Carl. He wants to hear it. And um and it's just been a really beautiful way to start to start my day. So I hope that you you enjoyed that and I'm I'm so thrilled to have you here. Um we're excited. We have a wonderful show today. If you are just tuning in for the first time, I want you to head over to Twitter. If you have a Twitter account, we use hashtag W I M G and we chat. So there's a whole crew of us that come on every Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we chat and we talk, and sometimes our guests are, sometimes our guests are actually on the chat line with us, chatting to everybody, answering questions. And if they're not, sometimes you can ask questions, and the guests will actually you know, come on and answer your questions afterwards. Find us on Facebook, just Where Is My Guru? And, of course, our website, our lovely website, whereismyguru.com. So really thrilled to, uh, to, to have everybody here if it's your first time here. Our guest 